My advice is don't dismiss or poo-poo budget price gear. Not all of it is junk. And what you see before you, I think is going to fit in this conversation. Um, I'm a person who has a family, a house, you know, bills, student loans, all the crap that costs money, all the stuff that you got to get a good job for to just keep your head out of water more, more or less. Um, so if I want gear, I'm usually subjected to look on the bargain racks, see what the inexpensive stuff is and wait for sales or whatever. Uh, I really, it takes me a long time to save up enough money to get the uh, top of the line stuff. And you know what? I don't have a need for top of the line stuff. Everything that I get that's budget does everything I need it to do. So what we have in front of us, something I picked up today at a Menards store. Um, it's the Guidesman, which is the Menards brand, you know, uh, pocket knives and utility things and uh, flashlights and whatnot. So I looked at this a couple weeks ago and I'm like, eh, I don't know. And then I picked it up today and I actually started reading about it. And here's the package it came in. Uh, everything looks to be... 420 stainless steel, which is whatever, but it's, I believe it's American-made, because usually it's the 8CR13 stuff that's the Chinese. Um, 260 lumen flashlight. I mean, right there. This whole package costs $10. And I bet you this thing right here is worth $10 by itself. Let's see, what is the uh, maiden thing here? I'll show... Say, yep, yeah, made in China. Oh well, that's the price of uh, not the price, but that's just the reality of having to buy budget gear, and it's not all junk. This is a little uh, pocket knife, EDC knife, whatever you want to do with it. It's not real big. It's not uh, spring assisted or anything, but a little quick uh, uh, wrist flip with a you know push the little flipper open and goes open pretty easy. <laughs> It's fairly sharp right out of the box. It could probably use a little touch on the old uh, works uh, knife sharpener to get it really, you know, hair splicing or whatever. But, you know, I'm not shaving with it. I'm not doing surgery with it. It doesn't have to be a razor blade. This will cut everything I need it to cut. So that's kind of my philosophy. But it's got an aluminum handle, 420 stainless steel, which is whatever, you know. I've never had an issue with it. But I don't go beating on it at the same time. You know, the black wash. I like the little finger thing here to keep your hand on. There's a little bit of jimping right here to put your thumb on. And this thing locks up tight. There is no wiggle in it. Aluminum handle. Pocket clip is, you know, not my ideal. Whatever. Mostly just looks of it. I just don't like the look of it. But it'll work. And it's lightweight. It's thin. Aspects I like in a pocket knife. The flashlight here is a 260 lumen light. It's got, uh, for maximum output, it's got high, medium, and strobe effect. So there's the high, and you just put it down to a tighter beam. There's the low, you know, bring it out. Of course, there's the strobe effect. Again, budget gear. You might have to click it two times to get the strobe on. It's not a big deal for, for me, at, at least. Okay, this one here I had the most reservations about. Because I've had several um, inexpensive, budget-priced multi-tools, and they're kind of meh, not too crazy about them. But not having used this, just my first impressions, I'm, I'm genuinely impressed with the way it is. First of all, all the tools are on the outside. So you don't have to open it up to access it. The blade there. That's a pretty nice size blade, I think, for a multi-tool. No serrations. Awesome. And it's got a liner lock for the blade, knife blade in here. Usually I haven't seen a liner lock on those. My other uh, multi-tools, which I use at work and every other time, are uh, Gerber's. And they don't have liner locks. They've got different systems. But it's got, you know, a decent sized knife. It's got a can opener, bottle opener, little 
I don't know, wire stripper, or ripper, something. I don't know. There's a sharp edge here, right here for your can opener. I mean, the possibilities are pretty much open, what you can do with that. And the file, which I don't, personally I don't need a file. And a can opener, uh, flat tip screwdriver. That's fine. One other thing I like about this, it has a pocket clip on it. This is my first multi-tool that has the pocket clip on it. And I like the option to be able to put it in my pocket if I want. You know, the other side has the saw. Again, liner lock. Fairly sharp. Uh, this one, I don't like. I don't really care for these type of screwdrivers. Um, they don't seem to work very well. I get it to focus on there. I don't know. So, whatever. It is what it is. And then we've got like a little awl here. Not really sharp, but do some whatever you need, poking holes and whatnot. Maybe using it as a striker on a uh, ferrule rod. And then the lanyard hole that you can lanyard this up with. And then you open it up like a standard, you know, uh, standard multi-tool. And it's spring-loaded, which is kind of cool. It's nice. It's got the wire cutters, wire stripper, standard, you know, large large opening for bigger nuts and stuff and then the uh, the needle nose stuff don't uh, don't expect me to know all the terms in this stuff because I really don't care it does what it does I don't need to know the scientific terms it's fairly yeah it's a little bit bulky but not terrible I mean if you compare it to this is my Gerber diesel which I use for my for work so I work in construction and one thing I like about this that this other one doesn't have is the one-handed opening. But the downfall to this in comparison to this is that all my tools are on the inside. But this one does have a pair of scissors, which I would like to see on this. Um, plus, here, in my opinion, Gerber has figured out how to do the Phillips screwdriver. This thing, I was so like, this is not going to work when I first tried it, when I first saw it and tried it. Um, but it works. It works way better than the pre-made Phillips that they have, and it'll fit more than one size. This is like the small size, like a number one Phillips, I bet. Let's compare the two real quick. Yeah, you can see the sizes are... Yeah, this is only going to work in smaller size Phillips heads, I bet. And this one here is similar to the Gerber suspension, which I really like. This is honestly probably one of my favorite multi-tools I've ever used. It is my favorite multi-tool I've ever used to date. I mean, who knows what's going to come up in the future. But right now, this thing was just top of the line. Not top of the line, but, you know, it does everything I need for it. And it works, and it doesn't break. Remember what I said about the liner lock on this one? This has a knife, you know, it's much smaller, and it locks with this little... Squeeze lever, you just pull it back, release it. Cool. This one has, you know, obviously the serrated and the non-serrated blades. That is an awesome feature. That is a great thing that I wish every multi-tool would do. I don't like, um, particularly in the diesel, I don't care for the combination serrated and straight edge. I would rather have one or the other, but honestly, I like having both. This is the best option. This, it is what it is. It's fine, but I prefer this. Okay, I'm getting off, uh, getting on a tangent here. We're supposed to be talking about the guidesman. All right, what else is there? Uh, the pouch for the multi-tool, you know, fits in there nice and good. It's, you know, this kind of, what is this material? Is this Cordoba or whatever it's called? I don't know. It's, it's pretty rugged, and it's got a snap for the closure. I like that. The Gerber... The diesel, Velcro. That works, but Velcro wears out. Snaps last longer, in my opinion. But this has an advantage over the Gerber pouch. Gerber pouch, you have upper and lower belt loops. So this thing rides vertical, like this. That's your option for carrying it. This one, you can put it through here, have it ride like this, or you can put it this way, 
and wear it sideways on your belt. And honestly, I would probably wear this sideways more often because this gets a little bulky. Your shirt's always, you know, getting caught on it and stuff, at least for me. It's a lot like the Gerber suspension. It has the same thing. This is how a multi-tool pouch should be set up as for carry options. And Gerber, I would like to see it snap closure. Velcro just wears out. I mean, you can see how it starts to fray after a while. It just loses its strength. It can be replaced, but snaps, I've never had to replace a snap. So, good quality, good design features for the guidesman. I'm kind of rambling on and off here. Um, just kind of spouting this off as I go. Kind of speaking my mind. Because um, I don't want to edit this. So that's about it, you know. Maybe I'll uh, do a uh, video later down after I actually get this stuff out in the field and test it out and see how well it lasts. Um, but yeah, my gist is don't, don't dismiss the discounted stuff because it probably has better quality than you would think. And as long as you don't beat it beyond its intentional or its initial design, it should last you. I mean, even if these multi-tools or this knife or this, uh, light aren't the best, you know what? For 10 bucks, I can put this all in my glove box and keep it there. And then I have multi-tool knife light available. I could put this in a suitcase. So when I'm traveling, you know, I've got these things at hand if I need them or want them. You know, this kind of stuff isn't, this kind of stuff doesn't have to be always considered, well, is this like top of the line material that's going to go through, you know, uh, invasion of Fallujah and back and still hold its edge and, you know, be 100% functional and stuff, you know, give me a break. This is bargain stuff from a box store. But this stuff here has better quality than a lot of people give it credit. So, that's about all I have to say. Um, give me a comment if you want. I'd say, oh, like and subscribe and all this stuff, but... Uh, I really don't care if you like or subscribe. I'd rather just talk to you, hear your comments. Um, so, yeah, that's what I got for now. Talk to you later.